Hi and welcome to another video from Natasha Lee. This week I'm going to be showing you how to produce these fabulously simple optical illusion nails. This look was inspired by all the wonderful comments I had on my video from two weeks ago which was about water marble polish mountain. Everyone said they loved this look that you can see on the screen now but it was totally unwearable and they wanted a version that they could wear. So here you have it. As always, after performing cuticle work, filing and cleansing your nails, it's time to apply your base coat. Links to all the products that I've used are available in the video description below if you want to check any of them out. Begin by applying your base coat to all 10 nails and then allow to dry. Next I'm going to apply a base colour of white and this is to make the colours really pop when we paint them over the top. And I'm just applying one quite thick coat, so I've applied it once and then gone back in with a little bit more while it's still wet, just to give a nice opacity. This look is going to require a really detailed, fine detail art brush. If you watch my usual videos, you'll know that I normally use the Pure Colour Micro Style brushes, however they just wouldn't be fine enough. And I've fallen in love with these brushes from Nail Artisan that are super, super fine and so easy to work with. I roughly planned how many colours I was going to need to produce this look and then lined them up. But once I started I had a bit of a problem. Before I started filming this video I went and got myself a large Costa Latte. That wouldn't normally be a problem if it went for the fact I'm normally caffeine free. So I had seriously bad caffeine quivers and I could barely control my brush. It made me realise though that I needed to plan this a little bit more carefully. So I applied my first line of red as neatly as I possibly could, but you can actually see here I'm having a bit of a hard time trying to control my quivers. Look, there's a really bad one right there. Once I'd managed to straighten up my quivery hand mess, I realised I was going to have to be a little bit more methodical with what I was doing. So I grabbed a pencil and I worked out lines of thickness all the way down the nail for each colour. This was just for me as a guide, so I knew as I applied each layer of polish, they were going to look equal and even. With the planning out the way, it was time to start painting, and I decided that I was going to try and follow the rainbow colours. Now there's always somebody smart in the comments that says, uh, excuse me, the colours actually go like this. But according to what I learnt at school, which was Richard of York gave battle in vain, it's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. So I'm trying my best to stick to that order of colours as best as possible. And tidy up any polish that you get on the skin with a brush dipped in acetone or nail polish remover. In order to try and achieve that polish mountain illusion, I realised that when I applied each line of colour, I shouldn't take it all the way down the sides. So on the first layer of colour, I went about one third down the side of the nail and then followed that line all the way down. And that's what gives that strange layered curved impression. And on the fourth layer, you can see it's really starting to take shape. You can totally achieve this look on shorter nails, just use fewer colours. And in fact, I think this look would look absolutely fantastic if you did it with pastels. That would just look like sweeties. It would be amazing. Once you've got your first two colours out the way, it starts to get really easy and a lot quicker. I think I was just nervous when I first started applying with the caffeine shakes and everything else. I didn't think the look was going to work. But once I'd got rid of the caffeine out of my system and started to get a feel for the design, it seemed to flow really, really easily and I was having so much fun. By this stage, they were starting to remind me of like the colour therapy books that you get, which is, you know, colouring for grown-ups because it's totally acceptable. But I was having so much fun doing this and it started giving me ideas that you could do all sorts of different graduated colours. For this, I wanted it super bright and like a rainbow and it kind of is. But that finished look really is so effective. You may notice in quite a few of my videos that I use the brand All That Jazz and you may or may not have seen it. It is a British brand, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, they've just sent me some polishes and I've bought some myself in the past. But they are fantastic colours and they're really good opacity with the polishes and easy to work with. I've also found that all the polishes I've used so far of theirs for water marbling spread brilliantly on the water.
We're about halfway through at this stage. I'd calculated that I needed 19 colours for my nails. Obviously that's because they're so long. But we're about halfway and we're ready to go into our blues and our purples and our pinks. But at this stage, it does start to get a lot quicker. And it's surprising how much quicker because you're starting to paint a much smaller area as you get towards the end of the nail. I think I have about 400 regular nail polish colours, but OPI's My Pal Joey is one that I just keep using over and over again. I think it's one of those essential colours that you need in a nail art kit. And again, Lottie London's As If is another one of those colours I keep using again. I only bought this from TK Maxx in May, and yet I think I've already used it in about three tutorials, maybe even four. And this is the stage now where the design is starting to look really fantastic and very, very effective. There's loads of different ways that you could personalise this look for you. Other than just changing the colours, you wouldn't have to do an arch like me. You could actually do squares and that would give a really funky look to the nails. We're coming towards the end of the design now and I've deliberately started to bring that arch further and further in towards the centre of the nail and that's to give that tower effect from above. Looking back at the nails now, there's probably a couple of colours that I wouldn't have used now with hindsight. I probably wouldn't have used the super pale blue Creekside from CND, just because it stands out a little bit and kind of stops that wonderful flow. I might have altered my pinks and purples slightly too, especially the Lucky Lucky Lavender, because that one I think just ended up looking too pale between the purple and the pinks. But then that's just my personal opinion. Now we're on to the last couple of colours and we're going to rain this in to finish. Because you're applying quite thin layers when you do this, it's actually drying as you're going along so you don't really have to wait very long for the last two colours to dry before you're ready to actually top coat. Now we're ready to apply our top coat and if like me you're choosing to use such feet, then just be very careful with this sort of design where you have colours over a white. Make sure that you get the such feet right over the first colour as close as you can to the cuticle area because it can cause polish shrinkage and then pulls those colours away from the white. And here we have our finished look. And it looks really, really effective. I do think it looks like the Polish Mountain, but actually more attractive because it's not a huge gloopy mess of polish on your nail. But I'm really liking these and so are my kids. And again, they remind me of Rainbow Dash from My Little Pony, which can only ever be a good thing. I've had so much fun doing these, please let me know in the comments if you give this a go or if you have any ideas that you'd like to see me produce and please do remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss out on my videos. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>